Hello. So welcome to this BPF BOF. Um, there is a name because there is a speaker. Uh, we're not really speaker. We're just gathering here. And my name is Shang Si Yu. I work for SUSE on BP, uh, SUSE's BPF stack. And if you find a hard time seeing me, that's because I'm short and you're sitting too far. So please come to this area of the room and we can have a better discussion because we only have one mic. And also now. Yeah, my, uh, my name is Yutaro Hayakawa. Uh, I'm a co-host and working for the ISO Ireland uh, to like develop the Cilium. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining. So I, I know it's like difficult to ask because if it were me, I won't move. But since I'm up there, please I'm like please come forward to to this this section. That's that makes it thank you so much. All right, uh, okay, thank you so much. Um, so I'll just, since it's a large crowd, so like previously you were thinking about making everyone do some self-introduction, but apparently there's too many people interested. So let me try something else. So, um, so the point of this BOF is of course, meet other people who also work on BPF or interested in BPF. And for that, usually it's very hard. Like there isn't that many people work on B BPF. So if you want to find other communities, I recommend checking out Selim Slack on eBPF channel. And also for the more or BPF development, there's also the BPF mailing list. And you can find the slides on the uh, SCAD website. And we actually have quite a lot of uh, APAC events this year. So there's EPF BPF day in India, EBPF conference in China, and there's also EBPF workshop in Sydney. And there is also some meetup. I host one in Taipei um, in August. And there's actually one EBPF Japan meetup just occurred a while back in August, which is really nice. Um, so upcoming ones, there, these are more important. So there's actually a B EBPF dev room in FOSDEM that will be in Brussels. And there's CFP, I think it's, um, you can send proposal on, I think, around December. I think so it will be really fun to go there. There's also EBP of Summit, which is a virtual event that occurs yearly, I think around September. That's also nice. And there's also Linux Plumber, which will have a, usually have a BPF track. And uh, rumor says it will be in Tokyo, but that nothing is for sure. Okay. Okay, so I should move it to the other side. All right. <laughs> And there's actually the second EBPF uh, Japan meetup in Tokyo. Um, I think it's in December, right? Uh, yeah. December, yeah. So if you're around, definitely check out. But more importantly, like if you look at the list and find out there isn't one in your region, then you should host it. Yep. And that's the end of my slides. So, so right now, can I, like, do you have anything to add? No, okay, that that's bad. Uh, so it's back to me. Um, yeah, so, so I, I would like to open the mic. Um, it's fine if there's some silence, but like, anyone want to chat? Test. Uh, so I wanted to like talk as a person who knows like pretty much nothing about EBBF, but was like, uh, interested in learning more like where are resources or like small projects I can look into to understand and like find a practical use case maybe so yeah the, it is not, not mentioned in the slide but the like a recently like a, there is a like a documentation project uh, which uh, focuses on like a document uh, make the documentation 
the comprehensive documentation of the eBPF uh, and its use cases. It is like a docs.ebpf.io, uh, and like a, it is basically like a driven by, uh, like a community driven project, uh, and then like a many. Many like examples of the like a eBPF uh, like a eBPF features or like are currently missing. So if you like a like a want to contribute to that, like a probably you can start from like a running some uh, some eBPF feature uh, and filling the examples of that of that doc document. If the document itself is missing, like a probably you can write that. That is a pretty like like a good like a starting point. Uh, uh, you can start. You can you can also like read the document. It is really useful. Uh, yep. Start the ABPF dot io. Huh? For example, like you can you can like a click through the uh, no, uh, I mean, oh uh, yeah, that that is that is another one actually. Like that is another like a uh, like a, home, a web page like a, which uh, which is kind of the, like a landing page of the EBPF. Uh, it is held by the held by the EBPF Foundation, uh, and then like a, for the like a high level. Like, like very high level, high level like overview of the EBPF you can get from here. Uh, and if you want want further, uh, then probably you can visit docs.ebpf.io. Uh, that is a pretty good standpoint. point. I hope that answered to your question. Mm. Pro probably we can like uh, let's try to like uh, go go through the document uh, and. So yeah, for example, like if you like uh, go go through this like document, like a Linux uh, references. Say for example, let's say let's take some like helper functions as an example. For example, Cisco helpers. Um, Maybe network helpers might gonna be better. Now probably like uh, let's pick this app like a sync cookie helpers, and let's see here, and then and then, yeah. So here we have we have some like document around the, like around the feature of the eBPF, uh, and then like uh, it. Uh, it is basically like a taken, uh, like a taken from the uh, the document uh, document on the code, uh, but the like uh, as you see like uh, this like a. Uh, you will see this this kind of the like a warnings like a which document should be improved. Uh, for example, like in this case, like a usage document is missing, uh, and in this case, like example is also missing. So probably, if you uh, manage to like uh, try this out, uh, then probably you can you can already contribute to this document. Like you can write your like the write down like a, put your code on into here, uh, and then it it is like a working as a work, works as an example. So that, that's what I said. Yep, that's a good point. Uh, so my colleague uh, Riz Lies also also like uh, published uh, the book, which is the uh, introduction to BPF. A uh, learning BPF. Oh, sorry, learning BPF. 
yeah. So this kind of the book, uh, you can, uh, it is also uh, translated to Japanese, so Nihongaku mo saikin dete masu. So yeah, so this is, this is also like a good starting point. The, actually it is, it is like, a, like a digging into the, like a pretty deeper, <laughs> deeper place actually. So it is, it is a fun read, fun read, I think. So yeah, this is also the good starting point, I think. So I'd like to kind of talk about the safety of uh, eBPF sockets. Because, uh, for example, on this website eBPF.io, it says eBPF programs are verified to not crash the kernel, can only be modified by privileged users. So uh, I'll be the first to confess I haven't actually read the documentation or the book, uh, but having used DTrace in the past on both Solaris and recently Mac OS, uh, I was able to actually just deadlock my uh, Mac OS by writing some trivial D-Trace program. I don't know what exactly was going on there. Maybe there was some other kernel module uh, that was managed by the company that owned the Mac that uh, was causing it to kind of go in circles. But I had to basically um, you know, power down the machine to make it work again. So I'm wondering like, what kind of safety, safety features are there actually in eBPF that prevent this kind of thing? Um. If there's anything that does crash the kernel, that's considered a bug in BPF. So the question is what safety features are in there. It's a question of the verifier. They just found a bug that they made the assumption when they wrote the verifier that all trace or all trace points or trace uh, trace points will have content in their param parameters. So the verifier never checked if the BPF program checked the va if the parameter was null or not. And if it said, oh, this is the structure, we could dereference it. Well. When they found out that this was actually not a requirement for trace events, because a lot of trace events could take nulls in there, well, now they have a problem. It's a bug. They have to fix it. So ideally, you should never have a crash, and if it does, report it. So if you could ever, in fact, if you um, have like a fuzzer or something like that just tries random crap on BPF and it crashes, that's a bug. That should be fixed. So. Hmm. So what about things that just take forever to run, not even necessarily deadlock, but something that you know, blocks everything on the machine for an amount of time? <laughs> the, uh, the BPF programs are not turning complete. Right. So that means that they can check its effect, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the verifier is supposed to handle the halting problem. Right. So, so basically, <laughs> I mean, everything should be limited now. The question is, what do you mean how like, it runs forever or deadlock or I mean, I mean that even for running for like three seconds could be bad on a production system, right? Then don't load those BPF programs. <laughs> 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 Sorry, but are you talking about BPF or D trace on Mac? I uh, kind of both because uh, the experience I have with D trace, so I just want to give up here. Because so, like a, I, I think that in the beginning, at the beginning of the eBPF, like a, the kind kind of the disclaimer against that pro, uh, that problem was like uh, limiting the number of the instructions. We are li I'm pretty limited. And it, another another one is that we don't allow the loop. Um, basically, doing the, the in the control flow, like uh, we don't like uh, allow to go backwards. Uh, it, it it can only go go forward. But the the things are changing recently. Actually, like uh, it is it, the bounded loop is allowed, and uh, like uh, in the latest uh, in the latest kernel, that probably the up to like a B BPF loop helper uh, allows like a pretty pretty much like a lot of a lot of like a looping, and the, it is. I think it, uh, compared to the, in the past, it is it is also like a becoming very like a time consuming, and the, like a, is it like a. From the from the kernel of developers perspective, uh, perspective uh, do you think it is it is very problematic or it is fine? Uh, <laughs> Actually, I, I feel that they constantly keep pushing the limits on mm. what BPF is uh, or what BPF can do mm. constantly. I mean, eventually, I'm waiting for them to say, "Oh, screw it, we'll make it a Turing complete." Um, <laughs> so I'm not. Uh, that's why I just use ftrace and just <laughs> it's, it's, it's guaranteed. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about that. I mean, right now you have the SCEDX, which now opens up a whole grand things. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more stress 
uh, which was why I my next project is to create uh, pluggable schedulers. So mm. uh, actual C in C, not BPF. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, anyone uh, running BPF on like real-time system, or like is that a very bad idea? Well, I know we had to um, have the BPF folks fix BPF because they actually broke all the guarantees on the real-time system. So uh, they did make it. Now I guess it's migrate disable. So did, before they needed preempt disable. I think now, uh, well, trace things that you hook into the trace points. Yeah, that's still going to be preempt disable, but. Uh, well, actually, I think we can preempt those. I, I, it's not even preempt disable, is it? I think we still do, yeah. Um, so real, yeah, they can affect real time. Uh, we usually recommend people that use real RTOS or make Linux real time don't use BPF. <laughs> so one interesting use I've heard about BPF is um, to make things run slower. So you attach a BPF program to a certain point and just make it loop for a, a, like, Thousand cycle, like that's kind of like what you're asking, but they're using it to make um, some race condition easier to reproduce without having to recompile the kernel. Yeah. Sorry, I think more to your point um, about Btrace and Mac, I've never ran it successfully, like like I seen on Solaris. So on Solaris it was stable. I've never had any crashes, but on Mac. It's just all kinds of errors that I've always experienced. I think it worked like 10 years ago, but then I tried it recently after I got my, my, my previous workplace, and it didn't really work. I mean, to disable the system integrity protection and everything to run it. So, like, mm. kind of broke it. <laughs> I have a different topic. Thank you. We're done. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so uh, one issue with um, the BPF ecosystem is uh, the pace of uh, rolling out features, right? So kernel developers really are frustrated because it takes a long time to roll out kernels because it requires like a drain and a reboot and whatever. And especially in open source, the long tail is huge. Uh, on, this, on the other side of it, application developers are really frustrated because they have the huge matrix of kernel versions they have to test against and support. Uh, and so one thing I've promised to look at, and I'm trying to like evaluate the level of effort, is fac refactor the kernel verifier into a loadable kernel module, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's just the starting point. Um, there's a belief that it can be done for the entire BPF directory in the kernel. So put basically everything in the load loadable kernel module except for like the syscall bits. Uh, and so the verifier itself is a nice starting point because it's pretty easy to reason about features even if it is painful, like either the feature is there or it's not, right? and you can probe for it. But what's really difficult is knowing all the quirks of the verifier because you know, with changes in Clang and you know, just intelligence, it's like, oh, I need to mask this thing here or do I not need to mask it? It's very difficult to feature probe. Mm -hmm. um, it might be impossible, actually. Um, so what I'm thinking, what I'm, what I'm curious to get feedback on is suppose I succeed in factoring into a module uh, I have like vague thoughts about having some kind of repository in GitHub with pre-built KOs, you know, targeting major distro releases and we'll backport stuff intelligently and try to put all the new, as many features as we can in the oldest um, kernels we can. But that's not the only way to do it. There's a lot of other ways to do it. And so I'm curious if there's any, you know, distro packages or anything or any, you, get, you guys have opinions on how this would actually play out assuming the refactoring succeeded. So if I get you right, you're saying that one of the outcomes is that you could have the BPF verifier run in user space with that, or in, um, in a different older kernel? Also, yes, for user space, that's another use case because now you have a symbol table you can look at with the undefined symbols and you can actually stub it. Because the verifier is actually, um, the verifier, you can sort of, conceptually, it's like a pure function, right? You get this blob of instructions, and it gives you some kind of verdict, and it also jits some stuff, maybe. So it's not like super pure, but it's conceptually kind of pure. So in theory, it can be done. And so if you stub out the right things, you don't need like the kernel execution environment to do this. You can run it in user space. And that, the other benefit is it accelerates verifier development, right? Because you don't need to 
rebuild the kernel, boot a VM just to like run this one quick thing, you can do the, if you can run all the, you know, the self tests or the unit tests for the verify itself in user space, it kind of accelerates even the kernel side of development. So I actually slipped it and so, so that came across my mind and what I want is have BPF verify in the user space and the reason is that it, it would make um, testing whether BPF program will load across different kernel much easier. So that, that, that sounds very interesting. And I have heard that people also want what you're saying, that is um, loadable BPF module. And a, a big use case is that they could, do, they could use BPF on old kernel to do tracing. But that, of course, requires much more work than that. Yeah, I think it's very interesting. Actually, like um, I'm, I'm one, like a uh, wondering, like uh, moving the verifier into the user space actually work or not? And then, because, like, uh, it is kind of relying, relying on the internal kernel structure in, at, uh, in some places. For example, the like uh, the escape path pass to the uh, pass to the like a network program, uh, like uh, is a uh, is convert uh, the access to that such an. Such a such a structure is uh, like uh, converted to the actual SKF like a uh, like a structure, and that that is using, for example, like an offset of like a compiler attribute. So like it only wor works correctly for the like uh, actual the like a uh, the 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 actual like a uh, kernel like a uh, binary. But the like in terms of the, like a testing purpose or something, it doesn't matter much, I guess. Like we can uh, define the like a dummy uh, like a dummy escape for for example in that case. Um, but yeah, definitely an interesting idea, I think. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's one of the things that would need to be refactored, right? But if you if you kind of think about it, even the SK buff, so it's, you have the projection type and you have the real type. The projection type is the double underbar SK buff. The real type is just SK buff. The program interacts with the projection type, so you don't actually the verify theoretically doesn't need to know about the underlying type. Um, it would if you needed to convert this context access, which is like mm -hmm. the callback. Um, but that can sort of be factored out and hidden. Um, you can sort of think of some kind of substrate that's, you know, the kernel, the, the verifier module plugs into and the substrate will, you know, provide some kind of hopefully stable-ish interface. It doesn't have to be stable, but like stable would help um, with porting things older, but I don't know. So I was wondering, like, can you go back to the initial, like, pain, pain point that make, make you want to start this refactoring? Uh, yeah, I mean, the pain point is like it's very difficult to roll out kernels um, in like a, you know, in any amount of time really. And so at Meta, you see these long tail kernels, like it goes to like four dot something. Um, it just takes years and it's painful for everyone. Oh, thanks. Uh, is it possible to write the verifier in the BPF? Uh, yeah, there's some discussion about that. It's, I think it's too crazy of an idea for, for now. <laughs> it, it, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've heard this mentioned to me before, and it's like, uh, that would be cool. I don't, I don't think it's there yet. So um, I don't know what it would take. Yeah, the question is whether it's possible to write a BPF. Uh, verify and BPF itself. I think this is a different one. They, they are verifying the verifier, but um, the, the question was... But the idea is same. The idea. Oh, uh, I guess... I mean, I think it's not exactly the same. Like yeah, but, yeah, but it's similar uh, indeed. Uh, and they have some... This, the author of the paper have some very good work on verifying the BPF verifier, like the meta verification. <laughs> yeah, so, uh... <laughs> You mentioned about the pain points of uh, not being able to roll out kernels, but what's the actual problem that you're having trouble uh, with that you hope to solve by having eBPF be a loadable module? Uh, the reason I'm asking this is because um, 
I sometimes want to run BPF trace, for example, on a lot of stuff. But to run BPF trace, you don't don't only need eBPF. You also need F trace enabled so that the trace points are actually generated into code. So, what's your take on that? Uh, I mean, yeah, you're right. It's not like the only thing necessary. Um, but I guess to your original question about what the actual problem is, it's you know there's a bunch of bug fixes in the verifier that just take a long time to propagate to user space. And so one example of that is we recently fixed a uh, ABBA deadlock issue um, where basically, and, and we had to do this fix in user space because the kernel fix is it it's going to take a while to roll out and it's going to take forever. And so the, 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 the way it worked is like if you attached um, an F entry probe to a spin lock internals, right, the spin lock queued slow path thing, um, you can ABBA deadlock if two things are trying to do it in the opposite order because you're attaching to the internals of the BPF mechanisms. And something like that would greatly benefit from accelerated deployment. Because we had to do this crazy work around BPF trace, and it was like really complex. Yeah, I think like I would add that that is a real problem. Uh, like in the in the development of the Cilium, for example, like uh, like we tend to like hit hit a different sort of the, like a verifier issue, like uh, in the in the different different like versions of the kernel. Uh, but the, at the at the at the same time, we need to like support like a various like a LTS kernel and for example Red Hat kernel or whatever. Uh, and then another another thing is like the verifier is getting smarter and smarter over the time uh, and then in the late, later kernel like we can we can write more like a complex program in short uh, so like uh, in that case like uh, un, like while we are like supporting the older kernel like our code base is be, like uh, remains like uh, old uh, which is like a like, which is like uh, kind of like uh, optimized for the like a uh, very limited like a uh, version of the verifier. Uh, when we, when we w if we can like a uh, like a uh, raise the limit uh, the minimum version kernel like uh, we support then like uh, we can like a uh, like a uh, write the BPF code in more like say like a natural or like a smarter way. Uh, so that is also the problem. But you can't enforce the minimum version, right? Because your customers would be like. No. Yeah, but it it really depends on, depends on the environment like they want to run, uh, and they, like we, we cannot ignore that no, we cannot ignore that demand actually. Like if users want to like run the Cilium on the on the Red Hat kernel, kernel for example, then like they tend to be very like a uh, like a conservative, and they tend to like use the older kernel. Uh, so we cannot re uh, like ignore that demand. So like we need to like set that as a minimum. Could you ask them to load a new module though? Is that like Acceptable? That's what I'm curious about. I mean, like, uh, it's like uh, for for in case of the like a distribution, like uh, in my understanding, like uh, that like uh, taints the kernel and lose the like a uh, like a support uh, uh, from uh, from the Red Hat, for example. Uh, then probably that's like a unreasonable ask uh, from our perspective, I guess. Uh, Can we convince Red Hat to ship updates? That's today? gonna be that's gonna be the way. <laughs> yeah. I think the biggest problem is actually compliance. So when we ship our product, like SUSE also at the same, um, you, it has to go to certain like certification, which is done by external parties. So if you want to ship this um, BPF module, you have to make sure that it's also certified. Which, I, and something else. I, I know there's more than FIPS, but I'm not like. Sorry, I was gonna say if it's FIPS, and it probably isn't FIPS, because that's all I know. That's the only one I know. Of. Okay. There's, yeah. there's, I know there's more. I just don't know them. But um, FIPS is like boxed off. I think it's just the, the crypto algos, and if you okay. don't touch that, you remain certified in theory. That's what I was told. Yeah, I I am not entirely sure. Right, so this is a kind of a social problem uh, that uh, some of the distributions do not enable the features that you actually need for eBPF and for use of B-Trace. I mean, most of them do, right? But I recently ran into the issue that uh, Alpine does, but uh, not on the Alpine Edge journal, kernel, which is maintained by somebody in the community. Uh, and, you know, there's a bunch of, uh, like, politics involved. Like, how do I get the feature on the kernel that I want? And the, I think the only real way to solve that problem is to build your own kernel, ship your own kernel to their customers. I don't know. I've had pretty good success just asking distro people if they can enable this thing. Um, I mean, they're all just other people at the end of the day. It's not like some sort of magical thing. I just file an issue, and I'm like, hey, or if I, f I find them at a conference, I'm like, hey, can you like turn this on? Then you're 
bit about politics than I am. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just I just ask nicely. Yeah. I, I think that that is also the, like a reason to like uh, like a uh, like a uh, separate the EBPF verifier to the to the separate kernel model actually because like uh, since now it it is like embedded into the kernel like if we want to like uh, convince them to upgrade the verifier we need to convince them to like upgrade the uh, any other thing as well so yeah. I think with the, the shows actually we have very little data point on what the user wants. So like when you like Daniel, like if you ask, it's a data point, and it's more likely that it'll be enabled. Like we're mostly in the dark when it comes to this. And for example, like there's uh, SCADEX, which is like CPU scheduler in BPF. Like maybe like I'm hoping it, it will be enabled in more places, but right now maybe not. We'll see. Any other topics we uh, you want to discuss? Actually, okay, <laughs> here I'm So, uh, yeah, it's actually that our uh, privately we are uh, talked about the uh, BPF, but uh, now. Uh, uh, I'll say that there are now uh, BPF usually uh, put uh, their probes on their, uh, I'll say that the top of their, uh, the beginning of their, their function only, and are um, usually that the people are trying to uh, probe uh, those functions with their, their function parameters, but they're not uh, supporting that there are any, uh, uh, i say that there are local variables or inside that uh, of the functions. So that our, uh, we can uh, use that our, uh, dwarf so that our debug information to to find that the actual line number and the actual that the uh, local variables. So that our, we can uh, expand that our, the current BPF to or to support those features to find that the the you know uh, trace that the the function uh, was it that are inside the bodies. Uh, this means that uh, we can uh, also try, to, uh, maybe are able to uh, trace their uh, inline functions too. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, so um, about, so I think you had a couple good points. The first one was um, local variables. And yeah, you can do that in Dwarf, and BPF trace does a little bit of that. It, it, can, it can do that for C++, for the kernel, it's, it might work or not. Uh, in practice, like I mentioned before, we found that, you know, the dwarf, the debug info is just so big, and it's like, on a production system, how do you get it down on there? It's like four gigs, you have to tell the, it's because it's not installed by default, right? Which leads into the second point with the kernel um, dwarf info thing, it's uh, debug info, it's for the inline probing, it's usually not there. And so how, how does the user know to install it to get that probing information, right? Because all they get is this misleading data. They don't even know they need to install debug info. And for some distros, they don't even ship debug info. Like Arch Linux doesn't even provide. You have to build your own kernel to get it. Yeah, so that are, uh, we need to uh, ask uh, some of uh, the dist distributions are to provide that, that their kernel uh, debug info, not only the kernel, but also the user space uh, programs. Um, and also, uh, I think, uh, let's see, around that 10 years ago, we, uh, I think that there are the system tab in a uh, red, uh, red Hat people uh, try to make our uh, debug info D, debug info daemon, uh, which allows to, uh, what's it, it's actually that the proxy uh, to access to the, the debug info in a server. So that uh, such kind of uh, system, we, maybe we can, uh, what's it, introduce for, uh, what, uh, what's it, that are the production devices, yeah. Yeah, I think it, yeah, Debug info D definitely works for a lot of distros, like even Arch Linux has it. And yeah, and, and you're right, we can ask them to ship a debug info package, mm -hmm. that's totally reasonable. Uh, I don't know, just, just based on all the production stuff I've seen, it's just, 
I, I feel like Dorf is a bit of a dead end, honestly. And I'm, I'm willing to be convinced otherwise, um, but it's just, just the practical elements just don't work out, and so we're looking for alternative solutions at this point for tracing the use cases. So I was wondering that that's like a, let's think in a, let's think about the like a very like a like a minimum like a use case like tracing the local variable or something. Then we need some uh, at least uh, like a, the place of the stack 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 pointer like a, which is already provided in the BPF program, and then from uh, for the another one is like an offset and the like like a correspondence between between the symbol information or something. So. Um, like, do you think it is realistic to like extend the BTF to like support that? So your concern was like a basic, basically the like a size of the like a dwarf uh, and its complexity, and so like I, w I was just like wondering, if it is realistic to say like uh, extend the BTF for that? Yeah, I think Alan from Oracle is looking at that. Um, the uh, BTF is actually that's only for uh, function boundary information, so that are. Um, Maybe we can uh, let's say try to expand that to uh, apply to uh, what's it that are inline functions. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to extend it. They're going to change the, the spec. Yeah, the problem is their uh, their uh, BTF is actually that they provide that the summer uh, function parameters, but uh, that is just a uh, uh, what's it that are provide that the order of their you know uh, function parameters, what what not name and. We, uh, what's it that uh, this first uh, parameter is what name and uh, uh, what type, but uh, there is no uh, what's it that are assignment information. We need our, uh, some assignment. Uh, the first parameter is actually that are uh, s, for example, s uh, what's it that are RSI or something like that. Yeah, uh, we need that for supporting that the in, uh, inline function because that the inline function will. will uh, what's in that are it embedded in their uh, their coring function, uh, co cora fun uh, yeah, cola function. So that are uh, in that case uh, at that point uh, the parameters already assigned to the the other uh, registers or the stacks. So that are we need uh, to find that the which one which uh, register is actually that are the first parameter. <laughs> Yeah. Right, yeah, I mean, so the, the work Alan's looking at is they're going to extend BTF to have these lightweight location expressions. Yeah, yeah. Right, and, e and even with the DORF, though, like, um, I, I think that the stats were read to me at one point, like, s only 60% of, yeah. so 60 is a lot, 60% of uh, inline parameters are available in a register, which is great, but the other ones, you need that full state machine, and you can't run it in yes. the kernel. It was, a, it was a, like, ejected from the kernel, like, 10 years yeah. ago, right? So it's, like... It's a bit tricky. I think we might need to do some compiler support for it, which is on the table, and we're looking yeah. at that. Yeah. Okay. Since we're physically here, like we could try a. Um, more efficient business card exchange. At the worst, you'll get my my info at very worst, but hopefully more. So what happens is that this is a Google form, and if you f want to exchange your info with others, um, you can s scan this and fill out your info. And at the end of the event, I think tomorrow, I'll send it out to all those people who have filled with all the, the info of everyone who filled. So yeah, uh, it was very like an uh, interesting dis discussion. It was it, it was going too far actually. <laughs> actually, like it was in the in the end, it is uh, like a super hardcore <laughs> discussion was going on. But <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was fun at least for me. Uh, thanks uh, thanks all for joining.